uh, I want to be shared briefly with you. I want to be shared brief, briefly with you, um, talking about um, the natural versus the spiritual. Um, you know, the natural versus the spiritual. And if you have your Bibles, which I hope you do, if you have your Bibles, I want you to go to Romans 7. You can read it in your spare time, all of it. You go to Romans 7, verses 14 to 25. That's where um, the meat of my text will be taken from. All right? So I, I want you to join in with me as I share these nuggets with you on Destined for Greatness. That's right. Praise God. And um, for those of you that have um, commented on Facebook, on Twitter, um, just letting me know when you see me on the street, your phone calls, your emails, um, to say how much a blessing that I've been and continue to be to you, or we as, as a church and my teachings, I want to say thank you very much. If you want to be successful in ministry, if you want to progress, um, always be grateful for your mentors and for those who have assisted you to help drive you and, and push you forward in the Lord. Amen. I'm excited. I'm just all excited and pumped up about this awesome word that the Lord has birthed in my spirit. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And if you're just tuning in, don't forget this is Destined for Greatness. I'm a part of Vision America Church of God and we're located in Lot 470's entry right here in beautiful Greater Portmore, Jamaica over there in Grand Cayman. Number four, Dolphin Center. So go on over, come on over anytime and worship with us. Praise the Lord. Romans 7, 14 to 25. Praise the Lord. And I'll be dissecting the word. Amen. Praise the Lord. For we know that the law is spiritual. Praise God. But I am carnal. I think, you know, sinners and Christians alike know that there is a difference. You understand? Um, so, um, you know, I'm going to be going into it a little deeper. And so Paul said, but I am carnal. In other words, I'm in the flesh. You understand? I am carnal, sold under sin. Sold under sin. No wonder Jesus came and bought us. You know, there was a price that had to be paid for us. And Jesus paid that ultimate price. He paid the death penalty. And, you know, because we were sold, we were sold under sin. Praise God. Satan, um, you know, was our, t was our taskmaster before we gave our hearts to the Lord. And if you're not a Christian, if you're not born again, and you're still in sin, then Satan is still your taskmaster because you're still under sin. Verse 15, for that which I do allow not, for what I would, that I do not, but what I hate, that I do. So in other words, you know, what I, what I would like to do and what I know that I should do, um, I'm not doing it. And the things that I know I shouldn't do and the things that I really, you know, don't think that I want to do, these are the things that, 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 that I love to do. And I know most of you out there are listening to me. You can identify with what I'm talking about. All right? 16, verse 16. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. You understand? Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. So here we see, um, sin lives, sin abides, sin um, dwells, sin stays inside of you so you can't get sin out of you on your own you can't get sin out of you um, with benevolence you can't get sin out of you with being what you call a good person because none of us is good all of our feelings are thinking of goodness and all of our self-righteousness is in the sight of God is filthy rags you know none of us is good so, you know, uh, there is no good that dwells in us. You understand? You know, so watch this now in verse 18 of Romans 7. Now then it is no more me. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. That was verse 17, 18. For I know that in me, you see, not until you come to grips and realize that in you, in you, that is in your flesh, in my flesh. <laughs> you understand? dwells, lives, stays, remains, no good thing. That's what I just said. Nothing good really dwells or stays or lives inside of us 
once we're in sin and in the flesh all right so you need to understand that but the important thing is that you got to be willing to accept that it that that's a fact you know i know there are some new age teachings that um tells you that you're good you're a good person and once you're moral and once you do good things and and once you don't um you know treat people bad you don't do certain things that you're good and so you have the ability to become a god yourself you know because you're a good person but i want you to know that that's a lie from the pit of hell you know there is always this reciprocal action here and, and movement there is good there is bad it's light it's darkness it's up it's down you understand you go forward you go backward you know there's a right and there's a left you understand? So come on, there is an opposite of everything. So if there is an opposite of everything else in this world, why do you not think there is an opposite when it comes to morality and immorality when it comes to, to sin dwelling and living inside of us? All right? He said, for I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwells no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. In other words, you know, you would like to. It is, it, it, there is something inside of each one of us that has the tendency to want and desire to do what is right, to do what is good. You know, we have been born with that, with that, um, we've been born with that part of us that only God can fill. He can, you know, that area, there's that void, that vacancy that, that nothing else can can fill and and and, and we know that we, we know wrong when it's wrong you know you, you you know right when it's right and so here the word of god is saying you know that um that you know for to will in other words you know the will i, I really want to do it you know i want to do better i want to live a better life I want to give up this lifestyle. I, I want to stop going to the places that I'm going and, and, and doing the things that I'm doing. You know, I want to, but you know, there is something else that is that is that is that has taken a grip on me. Something is controlling me. You know, every time that I say, um, you know, the will comes and I say, okay, this is it, you know. Watch for instance at every end of year and every new year, you know, we talk about new about new resolution. You understand? We got make all these promises and and things that we could do for the new year and and you know as as one minute past 12 come you know you, you're back to square one or even worse you're celebrating and doing all those things you forgot that you just made so you some promises so the will is there but but um you know just like what paul said but how how to perform it is another thing you know i i, I don't know what to do have you ever been there have you ever been in a place in a position where you know what to do you 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 want to do it, but but you know there is something, there is a power that is greater than you, that is controlling you, that is holding you. You know, in your mind, you're saying, "I'm gonna, okay, this is it." But but then, you know, the, 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 you know, Paul says, "How to perform that which is good?" I can't find. It's hard, and and whether you believe it or not, even even Christians will tell you if they're honest. As a matter of fact, even pastors will tell you if they're honest that the challenge come by it's, it's there and you have to resist it and you have to wrestle with it and you have to fight you know it's a it's a constant wrestling going on and because you know we're talking about the natural versus the spiritual you understand so there's this constant tug of war going on you understand I pray and trust that you're being blessed already with these few words of encouragement let's read verse 19 of Romans 7 for the good that I would, I do not. So here you see, you know, the, the, the good that you want to do, that's not what you're doing. You understand? But the evil which I would not, that I do. So the things that I know you right, that's what the things that I'm doing. And the things that I know is right, I find it hard to do. All right? Now if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. All right? And you know in verse 17, it says the same thing. So it's repeated. That means there is that emphasis on it. There is that emphasis to let you know that sin dwells inside of you. And, and you can't get sin out on your own. 
You know, there's, there, there has to be a greater power. There has to, you need, you need to be delivered. You need help. You can't get it out by yourself. Don't let nobody fool you. Don't let all these teachings, um, science and um, Scientology and, um, you know, evolution and all those things, which I'm going to be teaching on. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm really des um, I'm destined to, to help propel you into your greatness, um, you know, that, that God has created each one of us to, to, to reach. Amen. Praise God. In verse 21 of Romans 7, he says, I find then a law. That when I would do good, evil is present with me. Now that's it right there. You know, every time that you say, okay, this is it. Evil comes right up. You know, that thought comes back. You start to remember, you know, all the things that was done to you. And all the, all the things that, that people said about you. And, you know, all those things. Don't get me wrong. It's good sometimes, believe it or not. It's good to, sometimes to not forget, you know, some things in a sense, but at the same time, I'm talking about nur nurturing it, you know, letting it rule you and control you, trying to destroy you. So you say every time that good, every time that you want to do good and you're about to take one step forward, evil is right there. Evil is right there to show you something, to, to cause you to be distracted and cause your mind to, to be changed. You understand? And, and if you're honest, you can identify with what I'm saying. You understand? There's a, lot of, there's a lot of people in prison right now. There's a lot of men and women, young and old alike, who will tell you that um, it was like a driving force. You know, they, they really knew that, that what they were going to do. They, 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 they were going to murder that person, that friend, that, 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 that person. They were going to rob. They, they, they had some preconception um, you know, thing in their mind, it was, it was there. You understand, we're not talking about self-defense, you understand, where it, you know, it's on the spur moment you reacted. We're talking about premeditated pre stuff, and you understand? And um, they will tell you that, um, you know, in the back of their minds, they, you know, they, 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 they knew it was wrong. They, they know they shouldn't go. They know that they shouldn't do it. But, but there was a stronger, there was a, there was a driving force. There was something, oh, it was, it was pushing them. It was, it was like, you know, if they didn't do it, that they were going to be the one that died. You understand? So um, this is what exactly what I'm talking about as I share these nuggets with you. This is exactly what I'm talking about. There's always that the good is there, but the evil is there. This constant war. You understand? He said, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man. You know, that spirit man. You know, there's, there, there's that, that inward man that, that speaks to us. That inner man, that, 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 that small, still voice that, that, that speaks to us. You understand? Talking about the, the spirit of God. You understand? He's here, verse 23. But I see another law in my members. That's my mind, my, 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 my body parts, you know, warring against the law of, 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 of my mind. There is the battlefield is the mind. You understand? That's where the war begins. You understand? The war begins in, in your mind. You understand? This constant tug of war. You understand? And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. So in other words, my body, my mind, my feelings. And then hear what Paul, after Paul looked at himself, and this is what each and every one of us have to do from time to time. Paul looked at himself after he, um, you know, after he um, weighed the whole matter. Paul looked at himself and said, oh, wretched man that I am. Paul said, listen, I'm nothing. I'm a wretched person. You know, and uh, not until, not until you get to that place where you realize that you're not as good as what you think you are. You understand? I don't care what you're trying to say. I don't care how you're trying to, to, to put on this camouflage and, and, and making people believe that you're so, you're all that. You, you, you know it in yourself. You're not as good as you're trying to make people believe that you are. Because guess what? In each and every one of us, even after you're saved, you know, even that's the time that the war is there. Even after you're saved, it, it, it is that temptation to, to want to, to want to um, step out of, of, of the perfect will of God. You understand? That temptation is always, that evil is always there, standing up, just waiting for the opportunity 
You understand? To, to drag you away and to draw you back in to some slum. You know, the Bible says that, um, you know, that the last state of a man is worse than what it was before. So in other words, you know, when you, when you, when you start, when you, when you were born again, believer, and you have tasted of this good word and this good food and you have eaten of some of it and you realize how good God is to you and you realize how powerful the word of God is, you know, then, 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 and you decide then to, to yield to the temptation to backslide, you know, but let's face it, I want to make it clear, um, you know, there, there, there is a difference, um, there is a difference in when you fall, you know, I mean, falling down is one thing, but are you going to stay down? Are you going to stay down? It's not, it's not, it's not. Yes, the fall is important too. Because you can die, you know, on your fall. You can literally die on your fall. You can get the wrong blow and, and die, whether it's in the natural or in the spiritual. But if you have breath blowing, if you have life, you know, you might fall down. But I'm telling you, you can get back up if you desire to do that. You can get back up. Maybe you're a backslider. And you're watching me now. You've been wounded somewhere along the line. Whether it's in the church, whether it's by a member, or whether it's by a friend. Whatever it is, maybe it's a martyr problem. So much stress, so much confusion in the home. It caused you to just give up and just go back to the drinking and the rivaling and the, the, the raving and, and, and the smoking. And the, you know, all the vulgarness that you were used to and then you were delivered from. You know, I want to say to you, you are falling from grace. You know, yes, you are falling from grace. But as long as you have life, darling, where there is life, there is hope. And I know there is hope for you right now where you are listening to me. Even if you're behind prison bars, I want you to know there is hope for you. You understand? Because you might be locked away physically. But let me tell you something. There is such a peace that could come to you, that comes to you when you are free spiritually. There is such peace and joy and tranquility in the Lord. Praise the Lord. So I'm, I'm, I'm praying that right now where you are, wherever you are, in that bedroom, in that kitchen, or in, in you know, your sitting room, you might be on the job, you might be watching this on your iPhone, maybe you're some part of the world that I know a lot of, and then this is reaching you, I want to say right where you are, you can come on back home to Jesus. You can come back home, you can pick up your broken self, you can shake off yourself and and rub off yourself and, and tell yourself where there is life there is hope for me in the name of Jesus and I'm gonna pick up myself I fell down but I'm not gonna stay down any longer I'm brushing off myself I'm asking God to give me strength I'm gonna ask him to forgive me I'm gonna ask him to wash me afresh and take me back and he's willing you might be a prodigal son right now you might be a prodigal daughter right now. But hey, our father, he's there waiting for you with his arms open to come on back home. Why don't you just pick up yourself and head on back home? That's right. You're coming to your right mind. Come on. You're coming to your right because you're realizing that this is not natural. This is a war. You understand? It is a war. Something is happening, you know. There is that constant tug of war, the natural against the spiritual. These have been my few nuggets, my few words. Once again, on behalf of all of us, we want to thank you very much for giving us this opportunity. And I pray and trust that you have been richly blessed. If you're not a Christian, right now, accept Jesus Christ into your heart. And you shall be brought back to life. And you will be given eternal life. Until next time. Go to the church of your choice, a church where the word of God is being preached and taught. Not just a church where you can be tickled in your flesh, but a church that will challenge you. And remember, the doors of Vision Miracle Church of God is open to one and all. Thank God for this station. Continue to pray for the visionaries. Until next time, Shalom. God bless.